Yo, what is going on guys? It is your boy Nick here, back again with a brand new video today. So today we're going to be doing my spoiler-free review for The Marvels, the brand new installment of the MCU that was directed by Nia DaCosta, and a movie that's going to be very interesting to review given the very divisive reactions that the movie has had this last few days. If you guys saw my video that I did like a little over a week ago, I think at this point, I made a video where I was talking about how I was nervous about this movie because of so many different factors. If you want to go watch that video, feel free to go watch that video. The main reason I was nervous about this movie was because of the inconsistency of the projects that have been leading up to it. I thought Captain Marvel was a good movie, but it definitely could have been better in a lot of areas. WandaVision was a lot of fun. I loved that. I really liked Miss Marvel, and I liked most of Secret Invasion, but was disappointed by the finale. And so because of the inconsistent quality of these projects leading up to the Marvels, I was worried that the story would be convoluted and that the movie wouldn't be very enjoyable. Thankfully, though, the story is actually not very convoluted at all. It doesn't really rely too much on previous projects in order to boost the story. And even though I don't think it's a perfect movie, I actually had a blast in the movie theater watching it. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on my, the things I liked about the movie, the things I don't like the movie, and my overall opinion about whether or not you should go see it. So as I said, the story doesn't rely too much on previous stories to boost the story. It really does kind of feel like its own thing, which I actually think is really cool, because it feels somewhat original for the MCU to have a story that stands on its own while continuing previous stuff. And if anything, I feel like it could just entice people to go and check out the previous projects they haven't already, as the project very much does stand on its own. It connects the TV shows into the movies in a way that doesn't feel like you missed out on a whole lot if you haven't seen the shows. I feel like it could actually entice people to go check it out. I know that there's some people who went into the Marvels not having seen Miss Marvel who are probably going to go check it out now because I know they really like the character in the movie. Now, that's really where the movie shines for me is that the three leads are a fantastic trio in this movie. Brie Larson is far more likable in this movie than she was in Captain Marvel. I thought she was good in Captain Marvel, but I feel like they barely gave her anything to do. I liked a lot of the scenes with her and Nick Fury, but I feel like outside of those scenes, they, she didn't really have a whole lot to do. Thankfully in this one, she has a lot more to do, and she gets along really well with the other actors. I think that Brie Larson works really well with the other actors in this movie. I think she works well with the other two that I'll talk about in a second, as well as some of the other supporting characters. I thought she was just a lot better in this movie. She was far more likable and charming in this movie than she was in Captain Marvel. I know the huge talking point about this movie, and of course I'm going to talk about it. Iman Vellani absolutely steals the show as Miss Marvel. I'm so glad that people are praising her performance, because she was perfectly cast in this role. But even the people who don't like the movie that much are still giving her all, all the praise, which I'm so happy for, because when I saw the Miss Marvel show, I immediately loved her. I thought she was a fantastic choice for the character. She, She's a big fan of Miss Marvel as a comic book character, actually. She's a huge Marvel fan, and she, whenever they decided to cast Iman Vellani for this role, it was actually a unanimous decision across like nine different directors, or nine different casting directors, to pick her and... It not only did it show, really show in that show, but also paid off a whole lot in this movie. She's stellar as this character. I'm glad that people are enjoying her a lot, because she's, she's so much of what's right with this movie. I'm so glad that we got her as this role. I'm glad that people are enjoying her performance like I did. Tiana Paris is also very good as Monica Rambeau. They give her more to do in this movie than I feel like they did in WandaVision. And I actually thought she was really good in WandaVision, so I'm glad that they're giving her more to do. And she actually has some pretty interesting stuff going on in her arc, which... I'll talk more about in a spoiler review coming out later this week. And between these three heroes is actually a surprising amount of emotional character moments. This isn't a perfect movie, and I will discuss some of the flaws with it later on in the video, but I thought that these three characters, their chemistry, and like the scenes with them, and the acting, as well as some of the emotional moments with them, I thought were really well done. I do have some criticisms of the scenes with them that I'll talk about in the spoiler review, but for the most part, I thought it was a very consistent like a very consistently working trio of characters that I thought just like did a great job in the movie. And we'll be talking about this movie as a sequel to Captain Marvel because it technically is, I mean I know it's a sequel to a lot of things, but as a sequel to Captain Marvel, the action scenes are far superior than that of Captain Marvel. That was something I was really pleased with with this movie. One of my complaints about Captain Marvel is that there was nothing really outstanding about the action sequences in that movie, not even from a choreography standpoint. Uh, aside from a few scenes were pretty cool, but this one, the action sequences were far superior, and that's kind of like one of the big, uh, like, uplifting aspects about this movie, is that the action sequences in this movie are fantastic. Very visually pleasing to look at, they're well choreographed, they're well shot as well, and I think that if you want a lot of good action from a Marvel movie, I think you're really going to enjoy the action in this. The film was also far better directed than Captain Marvel was. They got a new director, Nia DaCosta. I thought she did a pretty good job with the directing. Has a much nicer visual style, a lot of flair to it. 
uh, and mostly very consistent CGI. There were some moments where the CGI didn't work entirely for me, but for the most part, the CGI was actually pretty good. I never felt like they over-relied on it, and it was a, it's a very visually pleasing movie that's far better directed and far better like visually, aesthetically pleasing than the first Captain Marvel movie. I know I keep saying that word a lot, but that's... It is, because Captain Marvel didn't have a distinct direction style that might have been because it was directed by two people, and there was nothing outstanding about the way it looked or the way it was directed. This one had much better directing and visuals, so I gotta give huge praise to that. This movie also had better supporting characters, in my opinion. It was really cool to see Kamala's family again from the Miss Marvel show, and they actually, they don't take up too much time in this in this movie, which I actually like. I thought that they were there for like a pretty good amount of time in the movie, and you actually remember them. I thought they were actually really good in the movie. I thought that they worked really well supporting characters without like overshining too much in the movie or without relying on them too much or without giving them too little. I, I thought there was like the perfect amount of Kamala's family in this movie. This movie also has surprisingly a lot of really impressive world building, especially stuff involving other planets. I won't get into it, but there is a scene in this movie involving them going to another planet where I thought the world building, it's a bit si silly, but like it didn't overstay its welcome. And it was silly in a way I was like, that's actually like a really tasteful kind of silly. And I was actually really surprised by it, like especially the what I've written down here is the costumes and the makeup on this other planet were really impressive. Reminds me a lot of the stuff they did with Thor Ragnarok. There's also some really interesting musical choices in this movie. Some of them are a bit on the nose and some of them might get under some people's skins, but overall I didn't mind. I thought some of the musical choices in this movie were actually pretty interesting for the story. This movie is also packed with very witty dialogue. There's actually a lot of laugh out loud moments in my theater, which I was glad that people in the movie theater were really enjoying it. Lots of LOL moments where everyone was just like loving it, clapping, laughing. And that's like the main thing about this movie that, that I feel like is going to be a huge like determining factor on people's enjoyment of it is that it's a very funny humorous movie and that's a risk that I feel won't be for everyone. I personally really enjoyed the humor. I know lots of other people will too but if you're one of the people who doesn't really like humorous superhero movies or if you saw Thor Love and Thunder and thought that was too humorous you're probably gonna hate this movie but for those of you who like don't mind humorous Marvel movies or for those of you who like go to movies because you want to be entertained I think the humor is really gonna work for you. It worked for me. And going on with the humor, the stuff with the flurkins, you know, like those cats that do stuff with the tentacles, like Coos, really funny. And actually, like, I, I was worried that they were going to do too much, too many weird things with the flurkins. However, I actually thought they were in the movie for, like, a pretty, like, reasonable amount of time. And they actually contributed to the plot somewhat, which I thought was really fun. I think some people are going to love the flurkins, especially if you're a cat lover. Overall, The Marvels was a very fun, fast-paced movie, and I think that... It will be loved by the right audience, but there are some flaws with it, and so I will go through the flaws. The first flaw is, like, is as I said earlier, the humor won't be for everyone. I think this will be a little bit more of a niche Marvel movie, kind of like how Thor Love and Thunder was. So I think if you saw the trailers and thought, oh, that looks like a fun movie, that looks hilarious, I can't wait to see that, that looks like it's going to be a blast, this movie's going to be right up your alley. But if you saw that and was like, I don't know how to feel about that, you're probably going to be a little bit more conflicted so do it that which you will another huge like criticism of the movie that is a valid criticism is that the plot of the movie is very simplistic and there's nothing extremely mind-blowing about it and i have like written like a bunch of bullet points here it does feel very much like a character-based setup movie for future stuff there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on between our three main characters and it also teases towards a lot of future stuff that's pretty interesting but in regards to the plot there's not a whole lot to work with. It's a very simplistic, like, good guys beat the bad guys plot that feels reminiscent of, like, an older era of superhero movies. There's what it's simply, I have written here, like, the plot is very simplistic and it feels reminiscent of a different era of superhero movies, but with, like, a really nice MCU coat of paint on it. Like, it establishes a lot of stuff for our heroes, but it doesn't do a whole lot in regards to the overall arc of the MCU or the multiverse saga. And that's kind of, like, the main thing about this plot that's going to be, like, will it, like, how will people feel about it? I have, like, the plot is nothing to write home about, but it's also nothing to trash on either. Like I said, it's a very fun movie, but if you're looking for it to... If you're looking at this movie for a very super, like, intricate plot, prepare to be disappointed, because that's not exactly what this movie does. But if you can overlook that aspect of it and have fun with the characters or get really into the character moments a whole lot that you don't worry so much about the plot, you're probably going to like this movie fine. Another huge, huge, like, flaw for the movie that... I didn't want this to be a flaw, but unfortunately it is that the villain, a Darbin is very forgettable, aside from some cool action sequences. I will say that. The action sequences with Darbin, top-notch. Really nice stuff. But the actual character itself 
is very forgettable, and that's just because she's not given a lot to do. And I thought the performance from Zaw Ashton was fine. I don't want to trash on her at all. I thought she did a good job with what she had, but she's hardly in the movie and isn't given a whole lot to do. So this is kind of another one of those like formulaic a little bit MCU moments where it's like, oh yeah, the movie was a lot of fun. It's just the villain wasn't really there. That's kind of what this feels like. So unfortunately, the villain's not so great, but the heroes are really good. So I think that really does boost the movie up a bit. Another complaint I have is that even though Samuel L. Jackson is great as Nick Fury, and I love him in that character, he does take somewhat of a back seat here. He has, although the moments he's in are really cool. I liked a lot of the moments he was in. I just wish that we got to see a little bit more of him work with the trio. Because I wanted to see him work with Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel. The stuff with him and Rambo is interesting, and the stuff with him and Kamala at the beginning of the movie is really interesting. I just wish we got to see more of him with the actual trio itself, because I feel like that would have added a whole lot more fun to it, you know? Although something I will say real quick about Nick Fury is that I was worried this movie was going to do weird stuff with Secret Invasion, because Secret Invasion wrapped up a lot of stuff very, like, ugh. Like, Secret Invasion didn't do a very good job of wrapping up all the stuff in that show, but it set up a whole bunch of new stuff that was interesting, and I was worried that that would convolute the story, but thankfully it doesn't, so even though I wish that we got more Nick Fury, the moments we get with him are great, and I'm glad that they didn't try and put too much of, like, the Secret Invasion stuff in there. There's a little bit of like nods to Secret Invasion here and there, but not so much that you're going to be lost if you haven't seen the show. And the last kind of complaint I have is that the movie does feel rushed at times, mainly due to the short run time of only an hour and 45 minutes. And because it's a fast-paced movie, we're constantly moving from scene to scene to scene to scene to scene, kind of like Deadpool 2 if you think about it. And so the movie can feel rushed at times, it can feel like things are slightly underdeveloped, or that things won't go anywhere, but overall though, it was like a really fun movie that I thought the fast pacing really added the entertainment value of it. So what are my overall thoughts on the movie? Well, I'm gonna have to read through my notes, so I have quite a bit of stuff to say. It's a very fun movie, there's never a dull moment. It's one that I think is definitely overhated, but it's also not the most substantive movie either. There's some valid criticisms, but I don't think it's worthy of all the hate. Because where the movie really shines is in our trio and in the improvements that it had on previous projects. I think that the right audience will definitely really like this movie. And that's why I kind of written here regards the audience. If you saw the trailers and thought it looked awesome, you'll probably love the movie. I think kids are also going to love the movie because kids probably won't focus too much on the plot. They're going to focus on the fun stuff. If you have kids, I think that this is going to be a great movie for them to see. This might be a good like time with the family out at the movie theater, I think. Also, if, like, like I said earlier, if you're someone who goes to movies specifically to be entertained and not to critique it too much, you're really going to like it. I think also that fans of these characters will have a fun time. But if you're suffering from superhero fatigue, it probably won't win you over. At least I don't think it will. And if you're tired of some of the more lighthearted superhero projects, you're probably not going to care for it very much. Still, I think it is worth giving a chance, as the great stuff in the movie really is great. And there's a mid credit scene in this movie. I'm not even going to hint at it, but that mid credit scene is worth admission alone. You've got to check that one out. We'll talk more about that in a spoiler review, as well as a cool scene that occurs near the end of the movie. So... I can't wait to do a spoiler review and talk about that stuff. So overall, The Marvels was not a perfect movie, but it was very good. It was a lot better than I expected it to be. It's extremely entertaining. I thought it was well made for the stuff that they did really well. And even though there are some story problems and the villain's not really that great, where the movie really shines is in its characters, and I feel like the movie's job was to make you care about these characters and care about where they're going to go into the future, and for that, it succeeded. So... I'm going to give The Marvels an overall rating of an 8.5 out of 10. Very, very fun movie if you can get over some of the more frustrating technical aspects of it. And I'm going to give it a very generous grade of an A-. I was thinking about giving it a B+, but I decided to give it an A- because while I was watching the movie, even though there were some things I'm like, yeah, they could have done that a little bit better, I had a very fun time watching the movie. I can't sit here and, like, I can't sit here and tell you that like the stuff that bothered me about the movie like, ruined my experience. It really didn't, because I was just sitting in that movie laughing so hard, I was smiling, <laughs> like, my whole family loved it, everyone in the theater was really into it. It was just a very fun time out at the movies, and I hope it's a movie that you all will give a chance. Like I said, it's not perfect, and there are some things about the movie that don't entirely work, but I think that it should still be... People, I think people should give it a shot, because it is a lot better than, uh, than I expected it to be, and I, th I think it's also definitely a lot better than critics are giving it, like, credit for. So those are my thoughts on the Marvels. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys saw the movie, let me know what you thought about the movie in the comments down below. Do not spoil the movie in the comments. Wait for my spoiler review to come out to do that. Let me know what you thought about it. Just like, did you like it? Did you not like it? Uh, if you didn't like the movie, that's fine. You can let me know why you don't like the movie. If you did like it, let me know why you did like it. However you felt about it, without spoiling it, let me know in the comments down below how you felt about the Marvels. I hope that many of you will at least give it a chance. And be on the lookout for my spoiler review of the Marvels coming out sometime this week. 
And I also got some other videos coming out real soon that should be a lot of fun, so be on the lookout for all that. Also, make sure that you click the links in the description to go follow me on other platforms. I'm starting to stream on Twitch a little bit more, and I've been posting stuff on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. I post a lot more stuff over there, at least I'm starting to, so I want you guys to go follow me on those platforms so you guys know what I'm constantly doing. Thank you guys so much as always for watching the video. If you want to support the channel, make sure that you hit the like button as it really helps out. Feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell to get notified about my latest videos. And uh, yeah, that's been it. Peace.